Learn how to create these three super awesome gradients here inside of After Effects. Feel free to skip to the gradient design that you want to create the most. Be sure to drop a like on this video and let's get started. Okay, so here's the first liquid gradient that we're going to create. It's a very beautiful background and there's a lot of different options you have with this. So first thing we'll do is go to layer, new, solid, and we'll call this background. And doesn't matter what color you choose, click OK. For the very first effect, we'll go to effect, generate, and we'll select for color gradient. The colors don't necessarily matter what you choose, but here's the colors I'm gonna choose. For my first color, I'm gonna select this like, sort of purple here. For the second color, I'm gonna go to like a magenta. And for the last two colors, I'm gonna set them both to white. And when you select the four color gradient, you'll see that we have four anchor points here. What I'm gonna do is just kind of move these a little closer towards the center and get the colors on opposite ends, kind of like this. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is go to layer, new adjustment layer. And then the very first effect we're gonna use is go to distort and we're gonna grab turbulent displace. There's so many different options that you should take a look at with this effect, but what I'm gonna do is set the amount down to 40 and the size up to 1000. And then set the complexity to 10, and this is where it's gonna get a little bit crazy. Now, I don't necessarily like this clouded image, so we'll come here to the displacement type and we'll set it to vertical, horizontal, or cross displacement. Go ahead and experiment with each of these settings. And then what I wanna do is all click the stopwatch revolution and just type in time, asterisk 100, and this will help animate our background by a little bit and one thing you'll notice is that we're getting our image all teared up so to fix this we'll go to effect stylize grab motion tile make sure the motion tile effect is above the turbulent displace effect and then just increase the output width and height to about 200 each then increase the output width and the height to 300 or greater and then check on mirror edges and that will remove all the tearing up of your image so, we, so we're very close, but we want to make our background twirl. So to do this, we're going to go to Effect, uh, Distort, and we're not going to grab Twirl. We're going to grab CC Smear. Right off the bat, set the reach to negative 100 and the radius to 1000. All right, awesome. Then select the effect, and you'll see that we have an anchor point here in the center and over here on the right. And I'm just going to kind of swap locations. So I'm going to put that center anchor point over here on the right and that right anchor point here towards the center like this and kind of just move that around. But then what I'm going to do is duplicate our CC smear effect by going to edit, duplicate, keep all the settings the same. And I'm just going to move this over to the other side now. And truthfully, there's no wrong answer what you do here. It's just kind of pick up your own preference on what you see. And then all we're going to do is come here to begin our timeline, add a keyframe for from and to on both of the CC smear effects, move forward in your timeline, however long you want the background to play for, and just select your effects and move the anchor points. And make sure you do it for both effects. Uh, and this will create a slight, you know, nice animation within your work. So you'll have something kind of like this, it's coming together, but then let's go to effect, distort, and let's grab the twirl effect. Let's set our angle to like negative 30, and then let's add a keyframe for angle, and let's move forward here and set the angle to say negative 60. And then we can increase the twirl radius up to say 50. And now we have this very beautiful gradient background here for our text, logos, or whatever you're working with. So since we technically don't have any sponsors, before we dive deeper into this video, we want to let you know about our amazing Motion Duck extension packs designed specifically for After Effects and Premiere Pro users. With over 20,000 customizable templates, our Motion Duck extension packs make creating professional grade projects a breeze. Our extension allows you to browse, import, and edit templates right within your project. And to sweeten the deal, we have a 100 free template pack that you can download with the links in the description below. And if you do purchase anything from our website, you will be supporting our YouTube channel. So thank you very much. All right, next up, we're going to create what I'm calling this a marble liquid background. It's very cool to create this. To, so to get started on this, let's go ahead and create a new composition. And let's set the width to 5,000. And if you're keeping it 16 by 9, that height should be 2813. And click OK. So let's come here and let's create a solid. And it doesn't matter what color it is. Go to Effect, uh, Noise and Grain, and add a Fractal Noise Effect. Let's set the contrast to 165 right off the start, and let's open up the Transform tab. What we want to do is uncheck Uniform Scaling and set the scale height to 10,000. All right, so then we'll go into the sub settings. We'll set the sub influence to about 20. Then let's go into sub settings, set the influence to 25, the scaling to 10, and we'll set the rotation to 300 for fun. Okay, awesome. Then let's go to Effect, Distort, and we'll grab that beautiful Turbulent Displace effect. And we'll set our amount up to 215 and the size to about 350. And we'll set our complexity up to 2.5. And then the last thing we'll do is come here to begin of our timeline, add a keyframe for offset turbulence, move forward to the end, and we'll set the offset turbulence to say 5,000. And this will create a very weird animation, but it's coming together. And then next we wanna do is go to effect, color correction, add CC toner. 
We'll come to where it says Tritone and we'll set this to Pentone so we can use all five colors here. We'll come into highlights and set this to your primary or secondary color. So I'm gonna use orange. Then for the brights and midtones, I'm gonna set these both to black. And for the dark tones, I'm gonna set this to my either primary or secondary color here. So this will be a blue color like this. So now this is really starting to stand out and it looks really nice. So now what I wanna do is pre-compose this layer, go to layer, pre-compose, we'll call it map, move all attributes and click okay. Then we'll come here to composition, composition settings, and we'll set this back down to 1920 by 1080 or whatever resolution that you really wanna work in, click okay. Then we'll hit S on keyboard for scale, scale this baby down. And lastly, I just wanna apply some quick effects. So I'll come here to effect, uh, stylize, grab CC glass, and then go to effect distort and grab optics compensation, reverse lens distortion, and set the field of view up to 85. So when it's all set and together, you can have a really cool liquid animation like this, and it just looks really epic. Feel free to change the colors and any of the settings that we applied uh, for this effect. It's like the equivalent of a Jackson Pollock painting, and I'll show you why here in a second. So go ahead and create yourself a white solid, and what we wanna do is grab the brush tool. This should bring up the paint and brush tab. What we wanna do is double select our white solid, and we'll use a diameter of about 200 and make sure the hardness is set to 0%. Then we'll come here to paint. We'll set our color to black and click okay. And all I'm gonna do is just paint these black lines in here like this and kind of just fill it up as best as I can. Of course, we wanna be random with it uh, and it doesn't have to be anything specific. Okay, then we'll go here and change the color to like a medium gray. And we'll just create some lines kind of like this and just fill up your composition how you see fit. And then we'll come here to the color white, change it to white. And then we'll just go ahead and add some of this white back here on top and go ahead and create some circles, things like that. And you know, that looks okay. Then what we'll do is make sure you click on composition here at the top. So we'll go back to our main comp. Then we'll come here to effect, distort, grab a turbulent displace, which has been one of the key effects throughout this entire video. We'll set our size up to 250 and then we'll add a keyframe for evolution, come here to five seconds and just set it to one X. So you'll have something like this, whatever is coming together. Then the next effect we want to apply is go to effect, stylize, grab motion tile. And we'll set the width and height up to maybe 200 by 200. And make sure you check on mirror edges. Now we'll go to effect, distort, and grab liquify. We'll open up the warp tool options, set the brush pressure to 100, and we'll set the, our brush size up to 300. And then what we can do is just come here and just start clicking and dragging around. You won't be able to really see what I'm doing here because it's very effect heavy, but I'll stop. So this is essentially what you're trying to create. Just random swirls here, move it around, kind of have fun with it. All right, I think I'm generally okay with this. So now what I'm gonna do is go to effect, color correction and grab color Rama. So we can colorize this and it just looks like an infrared right now. We'll open up the output cycle and there's a drop down of presets right here. Feel free to go through them and kind of pick a color palette that works for you. The one I wanna use is called Old Glory. And to change color, all you need to do is double click on one of the triangles and you can change the color to whatever you like. It's a little different from our traditional color picker that we normally use, but click okay. And just feel free to change those colors as you see fit. So really the bulk of this effect does come through the liquify effect. So if you're not happy with your results, like I'm not in this moment, I'm just gonna go back through this and just continue to warp out the uh, image to change it around by a little bit. And when you throw down some logos, titles or whatever, you can create some really interesting, you know, compositions with this third and final uh, gradient effect. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more After Effects motion graphic tutorials every single week and always be creative.